why do why does it seem that Guitar Center employees really hate, despise the actual Guitar Center brands? So today I went to Guitar Center just to check out the products and look around. You know, I like Guitar Center. I like to go in and I went in to see, you know, just how they set them up because I know the one that's closest to me is really not set up really, really good as far as, and I'll put pictures on screen here where you can see what I'm talking about so that you can see the drum products and whatnot, except for Elise's brand, you know, the Simmons brand and things like that you can't really see. But I also checked the other one out. We only have two in our city, so I wouldn't check the other one out and they had them set up. And something told me, just run your camera, just record what's going on. Now I'm gonna play the videos in a little bit. I'll play a little bit of them. I'm not gonna play everything because I wanna make certain that these, the faces is not seen. But the thing is, it seems as though these guys, gang gals or whatever, don't really like the Guitar Center brand. And I've even seen people in the comments say, oh, they're cheap, they're this, they're that. One guy said they're made cheap um, in the comments. I won't even put the comments up on, on one of my videos. And I and I put, put laughing out loud because they're all made out of the same material. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's either metal or plastic or some combination of the two. My problem is this, and this is what I ran into. In video one, the first video I'm gonna show you, um, you'll, probably see I'll show enough where you can see me walk by and see that I'm walking the first drums you see the only drums they had set up are the Simmons brand there was a Titan 70 set up and they had boxes of 50s and the SD 1250 and maybe a couple more and my question was simple what drum should I get I got 1500 bucks and this is my budget what should I buy and watch the video I'm, I got about um, about 1500 bucks to spend, I want to get an electric drum set. This would be your best bet right here. Crimson, if you more of a realistic drum set, it's on sale for $899. Uh, that's within your budget because it's on sale right now from $1100 to $899. And as far as like USB connectivity, uh, live, uh, more live. Um, the sounding drums, uh, a plethora of drum kits that you can choose from and customize on your own. The ability to customize everything within a drum kit would uh, definitely be the Crimson. It has a 10 inch snare, so it's not small like the, the you know, uh, 8 inch or 5 inch snare in a lot of the kits that we have. I've been checking out online. Um, the Simmons product and at eight ninety nine, I think this one has a twelve inch. You, you, yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't say that one. You uh, still say the crimson. Yeah, hang on one second. Let me take this call here. All right, as y'all can see, he walked me right past the Simmons product and went straight for the Elise's uh, Crimson 2, which is a great set. Do not get me wrong. And at that price at eight ninety nine, it is a good buy. But this, the Titan 70 at this moment is, uh, I think it's seven seven ninety nine right now. And I think that the SD1250 is on sale for eight ninety nine as well. So you had two drums, the exact same price and one hundred dollars less. So as you can see, he walked me right past those and immediately starts talking about the Elises, saying that it had a better sound and things like that. I th you, you guys know how I feel about sound. I think that's a little bit subjective. And I, and I always say I can go and manipulate the sound in my doll um, and change it to whatever I want. So he, he keeps going on that, going on that. I eventually, uh, somewhere in the video, I start asking, isn't that a discontinued product? He said it was getting ready to be, I think he said it was getting ready to be discontinued. It's in the video. Um, but the point is, he never took me back to the Simmons at all. And he only had the one Crimson too. I asked him about the Simmons brand and he takes me back to the Simmons brand. And here's the audio. I don't think I can show the video. So they make a Titan bigger than the 70. The 90? I haven't seen it. Well, that helps me out with that. I do have another question. All right, so he talks about the Simmons brand, the, the, the SD1250 in a negative way, compares it to the SD1200 that's two years outdated. Um, and then he starts to talk about the 70 and he gets a little positive about the 70 and negative about the 70. So it's a little bit of a back and forth. Um, but he was a little bit more positive about the Titan series all the way around. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it on, because of, or just, just going to be audio, but um, he doesn't 
he doesn't know the Titan product very well. He eventually starts playing the drum, but he doesn't know uh, the drums at all. Now, I'm not going to fault the person for not knowing everything about every product in the store. I, I will not do that because I work in retail and I know what it's like to not know. But one of the things that I learned in retail very early on is when you don't know something, it is best to say, I am not sure. I don't know. Let's go look it up. And you take the customer. Let's let's go find out what it is and, and, and look it up. Let's go discover that together or find somebody that has the answer and get the answer that the customer is asking for so that you don't lose your credibility. So being that I do know the drum and I asked him what is the benefits, you know, what makes one better than the other? And the only benefit to the Titan 70 was Bluetooth audio. That was it. Um, nothing else. So he, he didn't know about the triples on ride. He didn't know about Bluetooth MIDI. He just didn't know about the updated sounds. He didn't know about any of that. And so when you have that as what you're looking at or what you're getting when you walk in, that seems to be a problem. So that was what happened with the first store. Now I'm going to talk about, let me, I'm going to talk about something positive that happened at the first store too. Okay. So we're still at the first store. And I switched gears and I asked about the Harbinger um, series monitors. And these came in. I know these well, those are, aren't bad. They are. Harbinger? The Harbinger? It's just, uh, hold on. What do you think about the Harbinger? I, I am going to buy a pair. As soon as I get some extra money, I'm buying a pair. What's so good about them that you like? The clarity. Uh, they're, they're very responsive for, um, for like for your mids I, I i mix mix mainly through my mids and my highs and it give you enough of a low frequency to understand where you know where to mix the you know where your mix points are at um so honestly they're not bad at all man and you're talking to a guy that has expensive monitors <laughs> that's cool like honestly um i'm he had nothing but positive things to say about him. And even with all of the folk he, he mentioned all of the speakers that he had. And I didn't record all of this, but all of the things that he had to say positive about these speakers in so much that he's actually buying a set. He's getting the eights. So he knew everything about that product. He's been, he even turned his phone on, which, and the, and the, the, the monitors were probably a good 40 feet away from us. Maybe he turned on, he said, watch this boom, boom, boom. And next thing you know, music was playing from his phone across the room. And he was just saying, you can Bluetooth um, audio with it and this and that. And it was a very, very good experience with that. He even walked me over to him, demoed him, talked about the clarity. I mean, he really got into these. And that's why another reason why I won't fault this man for not knowing about the drum sets, because he's really a studio engineer and he knew the studio gear more so than he did the drum set. So no fault to that. but. If you guys have been in Guitar Center, you know that that is always the case that the drum sets are usually just treated like garbage, for lack of a better way of saying it. And that was my experience with that today. But he did try. He, he really didn't have much positive to say. He really wanted the Elises, but loved the Harbinger product. Now, at the end of this video, you're going to see where I'm going with this. But let's talk about the next door. So in the next store, it was a little bit busy, um, busier than the first store because I got there at open with the first store. As a result, it was a little bit more difficult for me to get anybody to help me with the drums. So none of my video footage is for the drums. Now I did go and get somebody to help me with the speakers. I simply asked the simple question, Hey, I see Harbinger has monitors now and it takes off from there. I wasn't going to film at first, and I don't have a lot of footage from this, and I, I hate that, um, because I, and the reason, I hate that I did that or thought that way, because my initial thought was to get information about the drums, because I kind of expected the Harbinger uh, monitor to have a better thing. But what happened was, part, part of it was not caught on tape when we started on film, oh, I'm old. So part of, the part that was not caught on film was the fact that he said that, the small setting on the Harbinger speakers was, were the, I'm sorry, the buttons at the bottom of the front of the Harbinger were there so that you could hit a button to tune it to the size of your room. That is incorrect. 100% incorrect. So specifically I asked, 
what is how, what is a small? He said, if you have a smaller room, you hit this button. So he proceeded to turn the speakers on. And I knew what it was gonna sound like because I, I, they're, they're right here. He turned them on and when you hit the small, all of the bass comes out. So then he tells me that the bass comes out because of they're designed to be mixed without the bass so that you can mix your vocals, which confused me. But okay, I, I'm not gonna argue that. Everybody's got a different style of mixing. Then I noticed he started getting perturbed, not because I did anything, because I never let him know where I am, I never asked, and I don't set anything up. But he started getting perturbed because I said, okay, so, okay, so that was it. So what is the normal speaker and what is the ref, the ref is that, you know, reference speaker. And I tried as quickly as I could to get the camera to come on and here's the video. We said that a month ago. We just were able to put them out on display two weeks ago. So there hasn't been any uh, reviews on them yet. And I haven't any, had any customer feedback on them yet. What's on? Yeah. Now, I want to know what that small is really all about. Well, you can, by all means, I can. Uh, what is the reference? I'll give you all the information. Is the reference the same? What is the reference? Uh, I'm assuming. Reference makes it sound like a PA, full range PA speaker. As you heard, when, when you have it in norm, that's a studio monitor. So it'll act as an accurate, responsive speaker. Full range, when it says reference, reference, it's full reference. Like if it's a PA speaker, like in a discotheque, you're going to get more volume out of the bass, more volume out of the upper mids and highs. It'll push the speaker to its limit to give you the most sound out of the volume. That small, we need to figure out what that I just need to look that one up. Yes, it's small. What it's doing is it's taking the bass out. Well, yeah, I know it was taking the bass out. I was just, I don't know for why I would. And he walked away in the middle of trying to explain because he had no clue what he was talking about. He walked away when I asked again about the small thing. The bottom line is he had no clue what he was talking about when it related to those monitors. He was making it up as he went. And even he started to realize his makeup wasn't making sense. And instead of saying, like, like, like I said, I've been doing sales since 92 or so. When you don't know an answer, go get somebody or just say, hey, these are new product. I really don't know everything about them yet, this yet. I know when I turn them on, they sound great, but I really don't know how everything works on it exactly. He even called it a crossover once, and I think that's where I made him. I say, isn't the crossover in the back? Um, with your high low, you with your uh, shelf um, thing in the back, and he said that when he said when he corrected himself about the shelving, then he said that these are crossovers and decided when he started to explain what they were for, it just didn't make sense even to him. But that's my point. My point to Guitar Center, if Guitar Center watches this video, I am not. You know, I love the products. I love the Guitar Center all the way around. Uh, we have a we have a couple other music stores in my city, but Guitar Center is where I pr primarily go. So let me say this. I don't know what it's gonna take to get these employees to take pride in the store or whatever, but this guy walked out on me. He says what he says and walked away and left me. I was literally mid-sentence talking to him when he walked away, he just walked away. I mean, very rude. And I can't be the only person that has that type of a, a experience at, at these stores. And if my experience at two stores on just these two products is any indication of how all of the rest of the stores are, then yeah, it's, it's bad for business. It's just really bad for business. And I really think, and I don't know how, I, you know, my suggestion is some type of mandatory training, especially when you have a new product, especially when it's a house brand. That's my suggestion. But we, you guys gotta do something. Um, you gotta do something about it, man. It's, 
it's just bad experiences and people are you know getting bad information it's it's and it's bad for business and like i say i, I even the guy you even heard a guy in the video said there are no reviews out for it he told me they had it too much they finally put them out and there are no reviews no one's listened to them no one's even checked them out yet no customer reviews are online All I'm saying is, if Guitar Center is watching, man, we, we gotta do better. You know, I don't care that you, I don't care so much that you push somebody to a certain brand over the house brand, but I do care that they know more about the house brand. Because it really, it really is a bad look. Even when the guy said, I don't know if I played this in the video, but the guy said, he said, oh yeah, that's a house brand. He said, they really, you know, eh, they're all right. That is the representation I got from the guy about the house brand.